everyone and welcome to our session on staying sane when planning events. We are Beyond, I'm Kate Cassar and I am Alice Hancock. So who are we? Well Beyond is a global business, we've worked from um, South America, we've worked in North America, we've worked all over the UK which is where we're based uh, we've worked throughout continental Europe, as far as the Middle East. Um, we're still actually working on um, the Far East and Australia, but please anybody over there get in touch. Um, Beyond divides into two sections. The first section is project management, and the sec second section is consultancy. And the consultancy section then again divides into two sections. The first is strategic. So we help companies plan an event programme, for instance. So we will consult with them on who they're entertaining, why they're entertaining them, how they're entertaining them, what budget might be used to entertain them. Um, the second part of the consultancy division is training and that is training people like you and any other accidental event manager who might be tasked with the job of putting on an event. Why are we here? Well, event manager has been voted the sixth most stressful occupation by CareerCast. Now, the other ones in that list go military personnel, firefighter, airline pilot, police officer, and another live event, a broadcaster. There is one significant difference between what you are all doing and what these people do. And that is that all of those that I've just mentioned have a really long and detailed process of training before they start their jobs. And actually, more and more PAs are tasked with managing events on top of their day job, and yet, seemingly, very, very few PAs ever get any training whatsoever in in terms of project managing events, because you are just expected to get on with it and somehow do a brilliant job, even though you might not necessarily know exactly what you're doing. So our first tip um, that we employ when the stress hits high levels is to breathe. Um, this is our top tip for instantly feeling calmer. Um, breathing itself is a bit of a buzzword at the moment in the health and wellness industry. Um, and much more research is being done into how breathing properly actually can physically help us calm down and reduce our stress levels. Um, it's quite common that we breathe in our upper chest when we're anxious. Um, so by using the deep breaths, going right into the lower lobes of the lungs, we are stimulating the vagus nerve, which in turn reduces your heart rate and actually lowers your blood pressure. And um, Kate, do you want to say why this is important when planning events and indeed doing live events? Okay, so much of event planning and certainly much of managing events on site is about crisis management. Now, none of us plan for there to be a crisis on site, but all of us plan for things going wrong and things inevitably will go wrong. We've all seen those TV blunder shows about what goes wrong when you've just gone on air. It's no different on an event. Things will always go wrong. So at that crisis point, you need to be the fire extinguisher on the fire, if you like. And in order to do that objectively, you need to walk away from the situation. You need to get a few seconds or a few minutes to go and breathe really deeply 
and to return to your objectivity so that you can think through the problem and you can think through a solution which will work in the short time that you've got to play with. On top of that, you've then got to return to the room and you've got to communicate that solution to, it might be your boss, it might be clients, it might be your colleagues who are your guests on the event. But you've got to come up with the best solution you possibly can very, very quickly and objectively. So you need that breath to help you out. On to our number two tip, work backwards. Now this might sound really illogical and many of you are probably used to your boss sitting you down and saying, here's the brief. This is the kind of venue we want. This is the kind of catering. These are the kind of drinks. Now, whenever a client does that to us, we stop them right there and we say, you're at the wrong place. We want you to begin at the end. We want you to begin on, has the event been successful? And what does success mean to you? What are your guests going to say as they walk out of that room? Once you've really worked out what success means and therefore what your ROI goals are, you can then go back to the logistical brief of what sort of venue, what sort of catering you want. And I'm going to hand over to Alice to talk through the rest of the process. So once we have the bigger picture in mind, um, we can only then start to break the event planning down into smaller manageable chunks. Um, and no matter how long you've got to plan the event, it might be a year, it might be a month, this process allows you to break it out into your to-do list essentially. And by doing that you can set your um, deadlines with your suppliers um, when you need to get back to them in order to make sure your catering is available on the event, make sure your entertainment is available um, and you can also work with your own internal deadlines. Your event may need you to manage other internal members of staff for example if one of your ROI goals is to increase um, sales meetings uh, on the event for example, you're going to need to talk to your sales team and make sure they're available for the event and also make sure they supply you with key clients that need to be invited. Um, so that in turn leaves you with a timeline leading up to the event of everything that needs to happen in order to build up, back up that bigger picture, that end product by the time you get to the live event. And one last note on that, um, our first bullet point was start at the end of the event. I think it's always good to keep checking in on that end of the event so that you know that your logistics are always fitting in to that ROI strategy. So continue to go back to the end of the event as you're working through the event. Point three, keep it short, just like our little guy in the photo who can't quite reach his star, but he is certainly trying to reach for his star. Um, keep it short. In that we mean when you're when you need to get confirmation on certain elements of the event, for example, you found such and such a venue which would be brilliant but they can only hold um, say 100 people rather than 120, you may need to get clearance from your boss in order to confirm that venue. Um, little confirmations like this crop up all the time in your, in your planning journey and your bosses, your people who are signing these things off are very busy people and we know as well as anyone it's very difficult to pin them down, um, putting meetings in their diaries for example. So we, we keep the, the meetings bite-sized 
um, we find this is a really effective strategy in being able to quickly tick off um, things on your list that you need to confirm. So by scheduling bite-sized meetings, say at the coffee machine, um, when they're on their way to the loo, when they're on their way out of the building, going to their taxi, um, you can grab them for 5-15 minutes just to go through these points. And after you've done that, then relay it back in an email to them just to doubly confirm that you've they've confirmed these points for you and you're going ahead with with those items. So number four, power hour. Now far be it for us to tell you all how to manage your time. PAs are absolute experts in managing time, in multitasking and in getting the job done. But we are particular fans at Beyond of the Pomodoro method and we have a couple of little tomato timers, tomato in Italian being Pomodoro. And it's all about setting your timer to quite a short amount of time. It might be five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. But in that time, you purely concentrate on that one task. We're all only too aware of technology these days getting in the way of getting the job done. Um, so what I tend to do is I turn off my notifications, I turn my sound down on my laptop, and I just get on with that one job in hand until my little alarm goes off and my tomato starts to shake. And then as long as the job is done, I turn the timer back on and I get on with the next task. And it's amazing how much you can get done in these short bursts of time, these concentrated um, units, if you like. Events have a habit of creating a lot of admin <laughs> that go with it. Um, so by scheduling regular power hours, now it doesn't have to be an hour, um, you are able to keep on top of the emails from suppliers, you are able to file responses, you are able to update your event schedules, your, your budget sheets, whatever it might be, dedicate the time to do it because these tasks can very, very quickly slip to the bottom of your priority list but at the end of the day they are vital for you to seamlessly manage and keep on top of the the project. I think one last thing to say on that is that really small changes can have a really big impact on an event. So for instance on a conference if you have a VIP who wants to change his flight and he needs to come in the night before he was intending to, then that makes a huge difference in terms of impact of hotel room, in terms of one more breakfast, in terms of bigger capacity in the meeting room, potentially another translator because he will be joining one more meeting session. Um, so remember that really small changes might actually take an hour to implement in full but small changes equally, if you omit to get the job done, it has a really huge impact upon your event. So, number five, create cohesion. Events will always mean different things to different people. And we've all been in that situation where you have a variety of board members who all have different priorities. Um, a favourite one of ours was a client where we had a marketing director who was desperate to, send, to spend money and to have the latest brands and the latest technology on his event. And then we had on the other side of the story, um, we had the finance director who was quite happy for middle of the road and saving budget. So, there is a big argument for getting everyone in one room to get one decision. Over to Alice. And 
one of the key things we always communicate to our clients is try not to overcomplicate the event in that don't have too many goals or outcomes that you wish to achieve. Um, they may be all equally important outcomes, um, but some of them can be reserved for other events or smaller events. Get your key goals nailed down to no more than no more than three ideally that's the absolute maximum for any event so this really concentrates your message it doesn't confuse your guests um, when they attend they need to know why they're there what you're offering why you have invited them and have those messages really clearly communicated throughout um, if you have too many messages your guests are going to leave not really knowing what you're about as a company, what you're trying to communicate as a brand, and equally why why they have given up their time to attend. Um, so make sure that your event always has that key focus. And we talked earlier about the water cooler meeting and the follow up to that. When you've had your cohesion meeting, make sure that all senior parties have a follow-up, have minutes of that meeting, and make those one, two, or three main objectives really clear in writing. So that if along the way, one of the board members or one of the senior staff who is one of the key players in the event wants to slightly move the goalposts and take the event in a different direction, you have that in writing to go back to them to say, these were the objectives we agreed on. Is there a cohesive argument to change the direction or do we stick with the direction as it was originally agreed? So that brings us to the end of our top tips for staying sane when planning events. We would love to know if you have any questions or comments or indeed top tips of your own um, around planning events. And you can keep in touch with us um, via these avenues. Here are our email addresses and also our Instagram and Twitter handles. Like I said, we would absolutely love to hear um, your thoughts. And Kate, would you like to add anything to that? Um, only that this is not actually a photo of our office, <laughs> but we do love the words brainstorm bureau. We love to think of ourselves as people who brainstorm with each other and with you as our clients. So please do send any questions in and get in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you.